Hello and welcome. This is Matthias 76 and together we are decoding the headlines. As we do this decoding the headline video tonight, I want to take you to a couple of different articles that I found that are very important, especially as in some places they're rolling out mask mandates again. Everyone is afraid of the Delta variant. This video isn't about that. We're just looking simply at the efficacy of masks. I spent some time today talking with a family member. We were talking about masks and I got curious and I just went out and did some digging to see what valid information is out there. So we're going to look at some valid information and then we're going to look at what the CDC would have you believe. So we will start here with a credible source, the New England Journal of Medicine. No one will look at what the New England Journal of Medicine, something that passes muster to be in the New England Journal of Medicine, is respected in the scientific and medical community. Well, here is this article, Perspective, Universal Masking in Hospitals in the COVID-19 Era. That's the aim and intent of the article published by Michael Klumpus, Charles A. Morris, Julia Sinclair, Madeline Pearson, and Erica S. Shinoy. What do they say about masks outside of a medical situation, a hospital? Because that's what the article, again, Universal Masking in Hospitals in the COVID-19 Era, what do they say about masks outside of the hospital. I'll read the paragraph. It's the second paragraph. We know that wearing a mask outside healthcare facilities offers little, if any, protection from infection. Public health authorities define a significant exposure to COVID-19 as face-to-face -face contact within six feet with a patient with symptomatic COVID-19 that is sustained for at least a few minutes, and some say more than 10 minutes or even 30 minutes, the chance of catching COVID-19 from a passing interaction in a public space is therefore minimal. In many cases, the desire for widespread masking is a reflexive reaction to anxiety over the pandemic. Translate, fear, fear. I've been thinking about doing a video on this, but I just want to throw it in here. Fear, do you know what happens when fear grips you? What's the first thing that happens? You stop thinking. Your higher brain functions all but shut down. And you only respond to other things that are additive to that fear. Fear makes you weak. Fear makes you panic. What is a panic attack? When one thing that you are fearing is added on to by other things, then they all just multiply and all you feel is fear. Fear makes you vulnerable. Fear makes it possible for you to be led around by the nose like sheep being led by a sheepdog. It is fear. I'll read the sentence again. In many cases, the desire for widespread masking is a reflexive reaction to anxiety over the pandemic. Now, this article's primarily, argument could be made, is primarily about masking in hospitals. But look at what's up at the top. And it's an editor's note. It reads this, this article was published on April 1st, 2020 at the New England Journal of Medicine.org. In a letter to the editor on June 1st, 2020, the authors of this article state, we strongly support the calls for public health agencies for all people to wear masks when circumstances compel them to be within six feet of others for sustained periods. Do you think they took some heat? Do you think that if they could, without looking foolish, the New England Journal of Medicine would disappear this article altogether? I think the answer to both of those queries is yes. Now, this article, as well as the other article that we're going to examine, can be found on my website. The link will be below, but you go to Research Resources, our knowledge bases, document knowledge base. It's going to take you there. You can just type in masks if you want to, 
But you go to health, COVID and masks, and you click on this, and there is the article. There's the PDF. You can click on that link and it will open the article for you. It's there for you to download as a PDF without all the fluff and all of the, the advertisements and the like. The second article that I want to take a look at, and, and I heard about this in a video I saw online with a, a surgeon talking about masks, and he's out in New Mexico. And it was one of those things, someone put it on Gab, and they didn't put the link. And I couldn't get the guy's name clearly, so I couldn't find it, or I'd, I would link to that. But he's talking about the fact that there's going to be now a mask mandate in New Mexico again. And he referred to this study. You never know how you're going to find information. It turns out that this Danish study is the most thorough study that has been done on the effectiveness of masks, and it is a prospective study. And what that means is it was designed, the criteria were established for how it was going to be carried out. There were 3,030 participants in the study. That's important. It's a big study. And it was prospective. It's not retrospective where they're trying to piece things together from information of what happened in the past. This was a design study. This article, and this interestingly is here on the National Institutes of Health, National Library of Medicine. So here's the breakdown. The total number in this study I had said before it was 3,000, actually it's 4,862. 3,030 wore masks, 2,994 didn't wear masks. They were assigned as the control. It took place over two months and they were to spend three hours a day outside of their home, other just settings out and about while wearing a mask. The 3,030 who wore the mask, the results were that 1.8% of them contracted COVID, 53% or 53 rather control patients, 2.1% contracted COVID. That is statistically a dead heat between the two. So I will read the conclusion. The recommendation to wear surgical masks to supplement other public health measures did not reduce the SARS-CoV-2 infection rate among wearers by more than 50% in a community with modest infection rates, some degree of social distancing, and uncommon general mask use. The data were compatible with lesser degrees of self-protection. That's all fancy medical talk. It made no difference if you wore a mask or if you didn't wear a mask. The mask does not provide protection against the disease. And this is the largest study that has been done. And it's a designed study. It's not just looking at things that happen somewhere and trying to piece together the data. In contrast to that, we now go to the CDC website, also known as the Bureau of Health Disinformation and Spellcasting. This is their webpage that you go, if you just go search masks, protection, CDC, CDC mask page. That's how I found it. So with this information that they provide, a lot of boring, dry stuff that they're saying, basically, and it always sounds with the CDC, it always sounds as though they're trying to make something sound wonderful. They, they do it with vaccines. It, it, they're always putting a positive spin on what they want you to do, the behavior they want you to engage in. And then, after all the folderol, you get down here to the studies that have assessed the effectiveness of COVID-19 prevention with masks. And look at the studies that they cite. This one had... Two participants, hairdressers, two, two. And the intervention, it says universal masking in salon by local ordinance and, and company policy. That was their study. And then they reached out to these people among the 67 patrons who were available for follow-up. No infections. 
among the 67 available. That is presented as their top level case for wearing masks. That is presented as science. The next study was the study on the USS Theodore Roosevelt that only had 382 service members. It was a voluntary study. Some of them filled out the questionnaire and turned it in. They present that as the second best case for wearing masks. And then there's a study in China, households in Beijing, China, how many households? 124 households of diagnosed cases comprising 335 people. And if I read it right, that was a study within the house. So somebody in the house has COVID, what was the effectiveness of in the house with somebody who is symptomatic in a confined area in a home and you're there with them all the time, if you wear a mask, there was a 77% improvement of your chance of not getting COVID. This is what they present, and there are more. It doesn't get any better. This is what they present as the science for wearing masks. So the two articles that I showed you are out there on the website is a PDF. The CDC page, I'm just putting a link there in the same tab. You just click on it, it'll pop you, pop open a new window, and you'll be at that web page. You can look at it for yourself. I always encourage people, look at the information for yourself. Don't let others think for you. Do not seed your medical decisions to others because not all of them have your best interests. Not all of them have your best interests at heart. You need to make your own informed decisions. And I've got my webpage set up to help you do that. All you have to do is go to research resources, our knowledge bases, and document knowledge base. I showed you how to get there before. Also on our video knowledge base, we have a whole section right here, and I'm adding things all the time. You can go to health, COVID-19, and I've got so many videos on that that you have to expand the tab to see them all. Go out and check it out. The links are in the description below. Think for yourself. Question everything. It's a good guideline. Think for yourself. Question everything. I encourage you, smash that like button. Give us a thumbs up. It feeds the search engine optimization things that decide what videos get clicks. Subscribe on whatever platform you're watching on. We put out videos. It's changed. I've got to change my ending video section. We now put videos out on BitChute, Library, Gab TV, and YouTube. Share this video with someone else. This knowledge matters. People are having to make decisions. There are employers who are deciding whether they're going to have follow the mask guidelines. They need this information to make informed decisions. Share it with them. This is Matthias 76. Together, we have decoded the headlines. God bless and have a great day. That concludes our broadcast for today. We publish our videos on YouTube, BitChute, and Brideon. We hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give us a like or a thumbs up. We invite you to subscribe so you can continue to receive our content. Also, please consider sharing this video with others. We love to hear from you, so please leave a comment below. This is Matthias 76, and together we will continue to decode the deception.